For the longest time, I chose not to use a tiling window manager. Not because I didn't like the idea of one, I actually rather did. Instead, it was due to the fact that using one often makes use of a certain keyboard key. The super key, which is better known as the Windows key when it comes to Windows, or the command key on Mac OS. This key is often located one or two keys away from the spacebar on a traditional keyboard, which can make it a bit of a pain to reach. I don't mean that figuratively either. I mean it can actually cause physical pain. At least it did in my case, as I have a pretty bad habit where I will unnaturally bend my thumb in order to reach this key. And after doing it for a couple of years, it had started to take its toll. So when it came to tiling window managers, which often make heavy use of either the super or even worse, the alt key, I ended up just avoiding them in an attempt to prevent my thumbs from suffering long-term health effects. However, about six months ago, I discovered a new keyboard technique. One that not only enabled me to use a tiling window manager, but it also improved my entire developer experience. That technique is called Home Row Mods, which allows me to easily use the modifiers of Super, Alt, Shift and Control without ever leaving the Home Row. This not only makes it possible for me to use a tiling window manager comfortably, but it also makes me much more effective when working in the terminal, making it much easier to navigate Tmux, NeoVim, and even just the CLI. The way that home row mods work is, well, kind of described in the name. The basic idea is that you overload eight of the keys found on your keyboard's home row, with additional behavior whenever those keys are held, rather than when tapped. To show what I mean, let's quickly take a look at the behavior of my D key. If I go ahead and tap this key, you can see it acts as it normally would, causing the letter D to be typed out. However, when I hold this key, you can see it has a different behavior, sending the key code of left shift. This means that I'm able to hold this key down with my left hand and type out other keys using my right, causing them to send their shifted codes. But what about if I want to type an uppercase D? How can I do this when I also need to hold down the D key in order to activate left shift? Well, that's where the right-hand side of the home row mods comes in, as I've configured a key on the right-hand side of the keyboard that, when held, will act as the right shift modifier, the K key. Therefore, by holding this key down with my right hand, I'm able to type uppercase letters using my left, including the aforementioned D key. By having both of these keys act as shift, I'm able to easily use the shift modifier with any other key without ever leaving the home row or stretching to reach where the shift keys are typically located. In addition to shift, there are three other modifiers that are also used, which ends up as eight total keys that make up the home row mods. These are the ASDF keys on the left hand side and the JKL semicolon keys on the right. The benefit of using these keys is that because of their location, it makes it much easier to activate these modifiers compared to their original positions, causing your hands to hardly ever leave the home row, making it extremely efficient when it comes to touch typing. As for what the modifier keys actually are, well, in my configuration, I have it as follows. On the left-hand side, the A key when held acts as left super. The S key when held acts as left alt. The D key, as we saw before, is left shift and the F key acts as left control. As for the right hand side of the keyboard, this is the exact same layout but mirrored, meaning that each finger on my right hand has the exact same modifier as found on each finger of my left hand. This means that when I hold the J key, it acts as right control. The K key, as we saw before, is right shift. The L key is right alt and the semicolon key is right super. I actually chose this layout for a good reason, which was to correlate each modifier and finger based on how often I use that modifier with the finger's strength. For example, the control key is one of my most used modifiers. Therefore, I assigned it to the finger that has the highest strength, i.e. my index finger. On the other side, the super key is my least used modifier, so I assigned it to my weakest finger my pinky. By assigning the modifiers this way, it helps to reduce any finger fatigue when it comes to coding, which can be a pretty common occurrence when you make use of modifiers heavily. Just ask anyone who's ever suffered from Emacs pinky. As well as assigning keys this way, I also find that this layout works really well for my own terminal configuration. Take for example Tmux, which is pretty much the application I live in when it comes to writing code. In my case, I have it configured so that I'm able to cycle through windows by holding Alt and Shift, 
and using either the H or L keys to go left or right respectively. This means that by using home row mods, all I need to do is hold S and D with my left hand, and I'm free to cycle through the windows using my right hand, tapping the relevant key. Not only this, but because I have the control key assigned to my index finger, it also makes it incredibly easy for me to jump around my TMUX splits, holding the F key down with my left hand and using the H, J, K and L keys in order to navigate. Additionally, I also make heavy use of the control key when navigating near them, as well as also using the control and alt keys for navigating CLI commands. And of course, using home row mods has not only made it possible for me to use a tiling window manager, but it's also made me much more efficient when doing so, as the super key is now much easier for me to reach. Therefore, by setting up home row mods on my keyboard, it means I'm able to navigate my development environment with much greater ease and speed, whilst also causing me to make less mistakes when typing, due to keeping my hands on the home row. More importantly than speed and accuracy, however, is the fact that it's just better for my hand health. And considering that I plan on writing code until I physically can't anymore, keeping my hands in good health is something that I take seriously. So yeah, whilst home row mods aren't for everyone, for me, they're here to stay. And I've had them set up on every keyboard that I've used since discovering them, including the built-in ones on my laptops. Before we take a look at how to set them up, however, let's first take a minute to quickly talk about the sponsor of today's video, Brilliant.org. Brilliant is where you learn by doing, with thousands of interactive lessons in math, data analysis, programming, and AI. The platform makes it easy to learn anywhere you go, as it's available right on your phone, with fun lessons you can do whenever you have time. Whether you're learning a new topic or just doing a quick practice session, you can level up on the go in just minutes. If you're looking to learn programming skills, Brilliant can get you there through the applied Python course. This course will get you familiar with the Python programming language, which is one of the most popular programming languages out there. Throughout this course, you'll not only learn the fundamentals of the language itself, but you'll also be building programs with it on day one, using the built-in drag and drop editor. So to try everything that Brilliant has to offer, free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash dreams of code, or scan the QR code on screen. You can also click the link in the description down below. By doing so, you'll receive 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. A big thank you to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. Okay, now let's take a quick look at how we can set up home row mods. If you're using a keyboard that runs customizable firmware, such as QMK or ZMK, then you can set up home row mods using the mod tap behavior. I actually have a couple of examples for both firmwares in a GitHub repo for this video. You can find a link to it in the description down below. Additionally, I've also added in a couple of links to my configurations for both my ZSA Voyager and ZSA Moonlander, which also have home row mods set up as well. If you don't happen to have a keyboard with firmware that you can configure, such as if you're using a laptop, then instead you can use a tool such as Calater, which is actually what I used for my video on modifying the caps lock key. In case you haven't watched that video, Canata is an open source software keyboard remapper for Linux, macOS, and Windows, and is what I use to remap keys on my Linux laptops and on macOS. To install Canata is actually pretty simple. You can either install it via Cargo or through your operating system's package manager, if it's available. If you're using macOS, then you'll also need to install the Carabina Virtual HID package as well. I've left some instructions in this video's GitHub repo. Once you have Canata installed, you then need to define a Canata configuration in order to add home row mods. To do this, you'll first want to create a new configuration file. In my case, I'm creating one called Canata.kbd. Once this file is created, go ahead and open it up in your favorite text editor, which in my case is NeoVim. To start with, rather than implementing all of the keys of our home row mods, let's begin by setting up just a single key in order to make it easier to explain the process. Once we have that key set up, we'll then speed run through adding in the remaining keys. Therefore, the key I'm going to start with is the A key, which we want to assign the modifier of left super. To begin, we first need to define the keys that we want Canada to process. This is done by using the def source function with the following syntax. In this case, we're passing in the A key. Canada itself is configured using a Lisp-like syntax, which can be a little daunting at first. 
When it comes to Lisp, you can think of anything as being wrapped inside of parentheses as being a function. However, rather than the name of the function being outside of the parentheses, as it is with other languages, when it comes to Lisp-like languages, it's actually the first argument. Therefore, in this case, we're calling the def source function and we're passing the A key as a parameter. The next thing we want to do is define the overridden behavior that we want our A key to be mapped to. In my case, I like to define aliases to do this, as it helps to keep a bit of a separation inside of the configuration. Therefore, we can achieve this by using the def alias function, which will accept a list of parameters for the aliases we want to create. In this case, I'm creating a new alias with the name of a mod, which we need to assign a behavior to. The behavior that we want to use is the tap hold behavior, which is used for sending different key codes depending on whether you're tapping a key or holding it. We can assign this behavior for our alias by calling the tap hold function, which accepts four different parameters. The first parameter is the tap timeout, which is the amount of time in milliseconds you have to trigger a key repeat behavior by tapping and holding. To show what I mean, let's say I'm writing a story and I want to write the word ah. In order to do that effectively, rather than tapping the A key multiple times, we would typically just hold it down. But because we're remapping the hold behavior to be our modifier, then this no longer will work. Canada solves this by allowing you to trigger the key repeats behavior by first tapping the key followed by holding it in quick succession. However, in order to prevent you from accidentally triggering this whenever you're typing, Canada constrains this activation to a certain amount of time, which is known as the tap timeout. In my case, I like to set this timeout to be about 200 milliseconds, which is plenty of time in order to achieve this behavior, but doesn't ever accidentally trigger when I'm typing fast. The second parameter of the tap hold function is the hold timeout, which is the number of milliseconds for us to hold a key in order for the hold behavior to occur. This is kind of important when it comes to home row mods, as setting this value too short will cause accidental holds to be triggered, but setting it too long could end up just slowing you down. Personally, I like this to be set to 200 milliseconds, but you'll want to tweak this for your own preferences. The third parameter of the tap hold function is the tap action. In our case, we just want to set this to be the A key code, so we can define it as follows. The fourth and final parameter of the tap hold function is to define our hold action. In our case, I want this to be the left super key. In Canada, the super key is known as the meta modifier. Therefore, I want to set the hold behavior to send the key code of lmet, i.e. left meta. With that, the amod alias is now defined. The next thing we need to do is overwrite our existing A key to use it. In Canada, this is achieved by using the def layer function, with the first parameter being the layer's name. You can set this value to whatever you like. However, in my case, I'm going to set this to be the name of base, as it represents the base layer in my configuration. Next, we then need to specify the key overrides we want in the same order that the keys are defined inside of the def source function. In our case, we only have the single A key. So all we have to do is define the A mod as follows. With that, our configuration is now defined. However, in order for this to work, we need to make another change. By default, Canada won't process any keys that haven't been explicitly defined. This can cause a bit of an issue when using home row mods, as you want both of the keys that are held to be processed by Canada. Therefore, we need to tell Canada to process all of the keys. This is done by using the def config function, passing in the process unmapped keys option, setting it to yes. Now we're ready to go ahead and run this config in order to test it out. To do so, let's open up a new terminal window and run the Canada command, using the dash C flag passing in our configuration. You'll also need to make sure to use sudo unless you add your Linux user to the relevant groups. There's some information on how to do this in the documentation. Now, if I go ahead and run this command, followed by holding the A key, you can see it's registering as left super, allowing me to use it in conjunction with other keys in order to navigate my tiling window manager. Now that we know how Canada works, let's go about adding in our other home row mods, beginning with the S key, in this case, we want to give it the tap hold behavior of S when tapped, 
and left alt when held. Let's begin by adding the S key in to our def source function. Next, we then need to define the alias we want to map it to. In this case, I'm going to define it as S mod, setting the tap behavior to the S key and the hold behavior to left alt. However, rather than copying and pasting or hard coding the exact same timings, we can actually turn these values into variables in order to make it easier to adjust these if we ever need to. This is done by using the def far function, which allows us to define variables using the following syntax. In this case, I'm creating two different variables, one named tap time and the other named hold time, both with the value of 200. Now I'm able to replace the hard-coded timings with a reference to the relevant variable by using the following syntax. Lastly, all that remains is to override the S key with our alias. Again, this is done inside of the def layer function. We therefore need to specify the S mod alias as the second key parameter inside of the def layer. With that, our S key should now be set up. Let's go ahead and quickly speed run through the rest of the remaining keys. First, setting up the D key on the left hand side to be left shift, followed by setting the F key to be left control. Then for the right hand keys, setting J to be right control, K to be right shift, L to be right alt, and semicolon to be right super. That wraps up how to set up home row mods using Canada. If you don't want to type all of this out yourself, I actually have an example configuration you can find in the GitHub repository linked down below. One additional thing you may want to do when using Canada is to make sure that it launches whenever you start up your computer. If you're using NixOS, then this is pretty easy to do using the Canada service in your configuration. However, if you're using a different Linux distro or using macOS, then you'll need to configure this for whichever launch service that you're using. In the repo, I've created examples for both systemd on Linux and for launch control on macOS. You can also find the relevant instructions on how to edit these files and how to enable them. Otherwise, that wraps up setting up home row mods. For me, they've really improved the way that I type when it comes to working on a keyboard. And as is often the case with information that I share on this channel, I don't think I'll go back to a time where I didn't use them. Either way, I want to give a big thank you for watching, and a big thank you to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. Make sure to check them out if you're interested using the link in the description down below. Otherwise, I'll see you on the next one.